So, um, yeah. So, did you have? Did you have a question? You were about to think, uh, say something. At the end of the last session. No, Pastor. Yeah. No. I, okay. Just been answered. Thank you. Right. Okay. Okay. So, just want to um, kind of encourage us, you know, as as believers. Um, you know, this is God's desire. The the you know uh, the the exhortation that we started with, you know, as we prayed, that earnestly desire the best gifts, desire to prophesy, uh, you know, and uh, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. You know, that's that's God's will for us. And the reason that He, um, over and over again, that exhortation is there, right? You know, in in those three chapters, is because God. That's what God desires to do. Okay, God wants to show himself strong on our behalf. So, you know, we do what he has declared in the word and we we go ahead and just do it, right? Just be there and do it and see God move on our behalf. And, uh, and I think that's the greatest joy and contentment to, to watch God, to see that we are just mere spectators to what God does through us, in us. Right, so I just want to encourage us to um, to grow strong in the Lord. Really, you know, uh, uh, be nurtured in words of faith, uh, and uh, step out and and do what He has called us to do. You know, and we can start small. You know, we can start small, uh, maybe with, with family, maybe with friends. Uh, you know, and then somebody says, "Okay, you know, I have this thing. I've been going to the doctor. I've been doing this. You know, uh, just." Say, hey, can I just pray? And uh, it need be a long, lengthy one, but just you can say, can we pray? And uh, as you're praying, you know, you you lean in to the Holy Spirit, right? lean in and see what is God wanting to do. You know, you you lean in and be sensitive in your in your spirit, man. And what is God saying? What is God doing? And make it, uh, you know, uh, make it second nature. Right, so every time you do that, you know, just lean in and say, "Okay, God, what is it that you're putting in my heart? What is it that you want done?" And uh, and whatever He puts in your heart, and you know, you just go ahead, release that, stand in faith, release that, um, and it can be a blessing right, for those around us. Right? Okay. Um, so just want to encourage you to do that. Right. Okay. Let's move on. Um, you know, we uh, so we looked at all these gifts, okay, um, and we looked at um, uh, these gifts in operation. Some of them, you know, very clearly mentioned in both the Old and the, and the New Testament. Uh, especially tongues, we don't see that much uh, in the Old Testament. We see some indi indirect references. So we see that, and also interpretation of tongues. Um, we don't see. Uh, we see some references. We don't see any anything in operation. But then, you know, we see, uh, of course, plenty of references in the New Testament, right? So, um, for us to be developing, you know, just like how we develop our spirit sense of hearing and seeing and and so on, we need to be developing, walking in the gifts of the spirit and developing uh, the gifts of the spirit in our lives. Right? Um, like Paul writes and uh, to Timothy and he says, you know, do not neglect the gift that was given to you by the laying on of hands, by the by you know by prophecy or by laying on of hands too. Don't neglect it. It means don't uh, you know don't let it be there without use. Right? That's neglect. Right? So not only are we to desire earnestly, but we are we are told not to neglect these gifts. Right? The Holy Spirit comes and he comes with all these gifts within us. So do not neglect um, uh, walking in these gifts or the use of these gifts you know, at, at every opportunity. You know. uh, so how do we develop? You know, um, which, is, which is going back to a chapter which we said that we will look at, which is uh, the chapter on on love. Um, you know, the, uh, Acts chapter thirteen. Sorry, uh, uh, one Corinthians chapter thirteen. And we looked at um, that chapter on love, which is there. So when it comes to the exercise of these gifts, we see that it is to be with love. Okay, Love has to undergird this. 
it has to be motivated out of love. Okay, so um, let's just look at that. I just want to share the notes. It's um, okay. It's the chapter. So okay, let me just put it up. It's coming up. Um, so we see that 1 Corinthians 13, okay, um, this whole chapter on love. We see the context in which 1 Corinthians 13 is written, and it's in the context of the spiritual gifts, right? Chapter 12, listing of spiritual gifts. Uh, it also talks about the body of Christ and how we should minister to one another. Chapter 14, some more about the gifts. Uh, chapter 13, we see. Uh, love being mentioned there, and without love, how everything else is, um, it's it's vain, it's empty. Right? So, the first three we see that um, that love is patient, and a characteristic of this God kind of love is that love is patient and it's kind. So, uh, while ministering in these gifts, okay. Uh, we need to be bold, we need to be firm, we need to be confident in God. At the same time. Uh, that we are called to be gentle and kind uh, when ministering in these gifts, right? ministering in the power of God. Right? So, because love is patient and love is kind. Right? Now, um, like people may sometimes test that very thing. Okay? Test your kindness. Right? Test uh, your patience. But the love of God overcomes and the love of God is patient and it's kind. Okay. Um, the second thing that we see is that uh, the love is not jealous. Okay, it is. Uh, it is not jealous. That's that's what we see, right? Um, uh, love does not envy. Looking at verse four, which which means that it's not jealous. It does not look at someone and say, okay, um, that uh, you know, and envy that person, I'm jealous of that person. So, which means that. Even uh, you know, while working together as a community of believers, and when we see God doing something through a fellow believer, um, and um, God doing something wonderful, that we don't envy that, we don't you know, become jealous of that, but we praise God for that. Okay, praise God and honor what God is doing through that person, and celebrate really what we. God, God does through that person. And, and of course, it's a wonderful opportunity to observe, wonderful opportunity to learn, um, you know, how he's working and what he's doing through others. Okay, so love is not jealous. Um, in the same verse, we see that love is not proud. It is not proud, it is not arrogant, does not, you know, does not parade itself, right? So it's not proud, arrogant, boastful. So um, we, while we are confident in who we are in Christ, that does not mean that we cross over and become arrogant, right? Uh, we continue to be, just because God is you know, powerfully using us or, you know, the gifts are being manifested in and through us, does not have to make us, or we should not become proud and arrogant. Uh, because the, the warning is, again, you know, uh, that God resists the proud, which you see in James, but, but gives grace to the humble. We, now all these gifts are gifts of grace, right? Something that we don't deserve. It's it's enabled by God. So these are gifts of grace. That is why these are called charis, charisma, charismata. Right? Um, charis means um, a gift of grace. So these are gifts of grace. So when we minister the gifts of grace, we don't do the opposite. We don't become proud, but we because God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Okay. Um, love is also not rude or ill-mannered. Right? We we need we need to be Christ-like. We are reflecting the, the love and the nature of God. So we don't uh, we should not be discourteous or rude. Or, you know, because sometimes people do that. You know, they they forget their manners because they are under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But you know, but, but this is what love is: the love of God. Is not ill-mannered. It's not rude. So, so also in our ministering, uh, we don't become that. Okay, it's not self-centered, self-seeking. 
uh, or self-promoting, okay, which is what we see that uh, verse five does not seek its own, it's not provoked, thinks no evil. evil. So it's, it's it does not promote ourselves. You know, we don't need to promote ourselves. We don't need to focus on ourselves, um, and we don't minister in the gifts in order to, you know turn the spotlight on, on ourselves or to get some favors done or to, um, you know, nothing of that sort, nothing of that sort, because it is from God, it is through him, and, and we are just vessels, we are privileged to be vessels uh, in his hands. So, and the, and, the, and the love of God, this is the quality that it's it's not self-seeking so therefore when we minister when we minister the gifts we are not seeking ourselves to be on display we are seeking god to be exalted the lord jesus to be exalted okay. so these are really foundational things but we need to remember that we need to not lose this um always you know keep this in front of us right um Love is not irritable, um, says it, uh, it's not provoked, thinks no evil, uh, does not rejoice in iniquity. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not angered, it's not irritable, um, doesn't get provoked. So you know, we we realize that when it comes to, you know, ministering and uh, we were dealing with people, right? We're dealing with people and they could be uh, every opportunity that, that Things go the opposite way, right? The people can, um, people can, you know, provoke us. People can do things to, you know, uh, uh, do things to, kind of maybe anger us or whatever. But do not get provoked. Stay in the love of God. Stay in the love of God. Stay in the peace of God. Um, don't get provoked to react, right? Uh, we see that love has no evil intention. Okay, so we don't use the gifts to manipulate. We don't use the gifts to talk down and you know take revenge. You don't use the pulpit time to do that, right? Or minister and say, okay, you know, now is my chance. I'll get back. And we hear so many horror stories of ministers of God doing that, right? Something happens, uh, you know, and they use the church. They use the pulpit. To, to talk down on people to and use them as illustrations to you know cut them down to size um, you know but don't do not do that because love is opposite of that okay. um, love is truthful honest and holy therefore the gifts of God must be handled in a similar way right. um, love hopes believes, endures and love never fails okay so um so do that in the same manner like you know uh, a classic example is uh, the lord jesus um when ministering to the woman at the well the lord knew what kind of person she was right uh, in during the course of the conversation right he, he like I think, like when we see it, it's, we see that it could be a word of knowledge, right? So the Lord knew um, how many times she was married and the fact that she was having a live-in, she was in a live-in relationship. But the Lord, you know, conveyed that information uh, very objectively, so much so that the woman, having heard about her life she went and she testified to the entire village he brought them to jesus such were the the manner in which the lord ministered right um well he had harsh words for those who were hypocrites those who were you know religious leaders but we see that when he was ministering he was ministering in compassion and uh, he he well he did expose the sin of this person the sinful lifestyle but that uh you know there, there was no condemnation with it there was a conviction for her to change and she kind of um, brought the entire village and she said come meet a man who told me all that i ever did 
right? And love never fails in the sense love never comes to an end. It just can't, it never comes to an end. There's no limit on love. It doesn't have an expiry date. This is something that's going to be uh, that's going to live on in eternity. And uh, and so you know, uh, so we we will we, let's continue to walk in love. Love is something that is going to be eternal. That that is eternal. And so we continue to walk in love. The other thing that we see is that uh, when we look at the word love, we see that. Um, uh, love never fails. I'm sorry, the little word fail. Uh, it means to uh, to become inefficient, right? to to come to an end, to become inefficient, and uh, uh, has the understanding that you know, to fall from a place. Right? So, which means that love, as long as we walk in love and humility, as long as we walk in love and minister in love, that we will not, you know, we will not fall or we will not be without effect or we will not be you know things won't come to an end um, we will continue to have influence and impact when we walk in love and we minister in love okay so these are uh, some things that we need to keep in mind when we um, when we minister and it is um, minister in the gifts and it is tempered with love um, just want to move to um you know so developing the spiritual gifts right? so we see that love has to be a foundation so never forget that uh, because we can sometimes get excited with the fact that hey god is using me these things are happening god is speaking to me and uh, god is using me as a you know as a uh, as a spokesperson and uh, the thing is that we might get puffed up there's every tendency to get puffed up, but we need to stay grounded in love. Okay. Um, okay. So developing the gifts of the spirit. First of all, always motivated by love. Uh, do things out of love. Okay. Second one is what we saw this. Uh, you know, when we started the class, what we looked at that the earnestly desire. Okay. Just have a strong desire. Earnestly desire. Now, just want to say that you know. There will be several things to put out that fire out of our lives. There could be discouragements. There could be challenges in our own personal lives. And uh, maybe, you know, people pointing fingers or at us, uh, accusing, blaming, you know, several things that could happen to put out that fire. Okay, Or, you know, it could be some sin that creeps up. Uh, maybe we have not been careful, uh, we've fallen, and that definitely tries to extinguish the fire. And you don't have that same zeal. Right? Uh, when we don't have the same zeal for God or the things of God, uh, we need to really look in, introspect, and see what is causing that. Um, excuse me. You know, see, hey, what is it? Put, put your, you know, so that God can put a finger on it, say, okay, this is what it is. You know, you've been harboring bitterness or you've been harboring unforgiveness. Um, you've really been caught up. You know, you've been spe speaking some loose words. Or the Lord might say several things. You know, you might, the Lord might say, you've been compromising on things that you're, that you're watching. You know, you used to be very sensitive, but now that sensitivity is losing its edge uh, because you've been compromising on, on what you are watching and therefore you know because of that uh you know you're losing that fire right so it could be that um so be uh, you know it's time to introspect and say what is it that is killing the appetite what is it that is reducing the appetite um right so come back come back to it and earnestly desire uh, the other thing that we see is to stir up the gift of God, which means we keep the flame burning. It's like kindling that you know, the coal to keep the flame alive. And stir up the gift of God. Walk in it. Let there be, you know, the time between, the time interval between the last time we moved in the gifts and, you know, and at present what we're doing. Let it be short. Okay. Uh, let it be short. And sometimes we might have to 
and intentionally step out and say, okay, oh, it's been a while, you know, I need to you know, pray and, you know, just do it, get out of that, get out of that complacency and say, okay, um, I want to move in it, right? stir up the gifts of God. So um, at least uh, uh, Paul's instruction to Timothy, do not neglect the gift of God. Uh, gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. And uh, 2 Timothy again, he tells, he reminds Timothy and he says, uh, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Stir it up, use it, um, don't let it, you know, don't let the dust settle on it, right? Stir it up. Verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of Fear. So we see that one of the reasons was fear. Maybe fear of man, maybe fear of uh, getting it wrong, maybe fear of, you know, what will people say, whatever. You know, so God has not given us a spirit of fear. So this verse, again, is in the context of the use of spiritual gifts. Right? So God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, you know. Is given us uh, a disciplined mind. Uh, is not given us a spirit of fear. Therefore, you know, you stir up the gift. Okay, um, so the fear is not from God. You stir up the gift. Let it not be uh, dormant. Okay. Um, the other instruction we see in Galatians five: If you live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Walk in the spirit means to be led by the Spirit, to stay uh, in step with the Spirit, right? uh, listening to the Holy Spirit. Let Him lead us, let Him guide us, be aware of the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. Okay? Don't shut out. So we can never, you know, we can never switch off that way. You know, sometimes uh, people say, okay, I, I, I need a break. I need a vacation. I need a thing. Yeah, brilliant. But don't switch off the presence of God. You know, we can, don't intentionally, you know, stay away from, from God, even, even during these times of, you know, moments of leisure or entertainment, you know, always be aware of God's presence, right? Don't cut off, don't switch off. Uh, God's spirit speaking to you and ministering to you. Okay. Some practical things is to stay calm and rested. Okay. Um, you know, the word rest, noach, meaning to rest, remain quiet, be quiet, settle down, dwell. Um, the thing is that uh, um, for us, um, in our in our minds, to to really stay in that place of peace and calm, and not be agitated, right? Agitated or being fearful or uh, you know ang anxious. You know, so initially, yes, we will we will be right. We um, maybe we are praying and then we kind of anxious. Oh God, I want you to speak, and uh, we are anxiously waiting and saying, what if God does not speak? What if I get this wrong? And, but then relax, right? Uh, well, when God speaks, if God speaks, you receive it. And all that is required of us is to be in that place of peace, to be in that place of rest, and uh, to stay alert, right? Sensitive. So uh, don't be agitated. Stay calm in the spirit, right? Because there could be a lot of things happening out there, Um which really cause us to be agitated, right? In the natural, when you see that there could be things happening, uh, but you know, you stay calm in the in the inner man, and you stay calm in the spirit. Okay. Um, the other thing, practical, some more, some more practical thing is to step out boldly when prompted by God. When you know, you know, uh, the thing is when we when we continue to walk with God. Um, when we continue to, uh, you know, be obedient to His leading, we—it's like we build a history with God, right? We, we know that God has spoken, okay, because that's this is how He did. We are, we are becoming more and more sensitive, um, 
uh, not familiar to the point of being oh you know not esteeming his presence but but familiar to the to the point of being welcoming his presence and you know honestly desiring more of him so we become familiar in that aspect so when we do that you know we 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 do it boldly you know whatever god is putting in your heart we you know you you do that right? you step out and do it so it could be to do something it could be to speak something uh it could be to pray something out whatever it is right um be faithful be obedient and when we step out and do it it requires some boldness um maybe uh it requires doing things which we are not temperamentally you know uh, temperamentally it's, it seems outside of our comfort zone right uh so but it but it requires us to do that right see um i am not the person temperamentally who would go and speak to strangers um but the fact is that um you know just of just, just for the fact that god god loves people and god um god wants to you know deal in people's lives as as is encouraging me so much to go ahead and do certain things and i look back and i and I, i see that oh wow you know that's not me at all but but the fact is that god is even those you know those uh, ingrained temperaments and fears god deals with us and god changes that as well as we continue to walk with him right um so faith you know somebody defined the faith this way i'm sure you've heard that um that faith equals risk or faith is spelled as r a s k right so uh we will need to take some risks right when we are ministering we need to take some risks we need to probably it's, it's not something that we are used to doing and um, we need to take some risks um but when we take those risks when we when we take those steps of faith then we see that god um you know we walk in the plan and purpose of god we see god step in and do things that he's already prepared you know one one uh, beautiful thing that we see is uh, when we read ephesians 2 we see that um ephesians 2 and verse 10 for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them okay so we are his workmanship we are his works of art created in christ jesus we know what that means we are in christ new creations in christ and what are we created why are we created in christ we are created for good works okay so this is these are the good works we know that um, the lord jesus he was anointed by the holy spirit and he went about doing good right so these uh, we've been in christ we are created in christ jesus anointed by the holy spirit in a similar manner to do good so we are created for the good works which god has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them so he's designed these good works um i just want to share one uh, you know one instance which happened i think um, john was also john paul was also uh, you know john paul and i uh, we were going for the uh, for one of our um, uh, let me just put this down okay um so we were going for this uh, prayer walk it was in uh, you know jayanagar south so we went and then um, i think that was the only time both of us went together so we went and then uh, so we saw this person who was walking in uh, you know I was trying to walk he was actually kind of uh, uh i think he was walking with crutches i'm not sure but anyway we went and we uh, we told him about jesus and uh, we asked him if he would if we can pray for him and uh, you know we were believing god for healing and uh, we just wanted him to be completely okay that didn't happen uh i think uh, yeah right he, i don't know if he sat down you know on the side of the pavement and then we prayed and uh, over, over him he was being held by one other person but the thing is that um, uh, i managed to get uh, his phone number um and 
he kind of invited i spoke to him on the phone he kind of invited me home he said why don't you come so i went to his house uh there again got to share the gospel um, so they come from a completely you know non christian um, home you know from i could see very small it was just one room house um so went and prayed share the gospel taught from the word then got to hear that uh that his mother was actually a believer right so his mother knew the lord and uh, and uh, it was amazing See, the, the, the way they said you know they said you know, they believe in jesus the way you do and uh, so she believed in jesus the way and she also she was also um, you know she was uh, i heard that she, he said that the mother also she died uh, a believer and also was um, you know the funeral was done according to your ways and and something he said but the fact is that the mother god had touched the mother and we were walking that you know uh, that day and we got to you know we just took us we didn't know you know how it will he'll respond or whatever uh, but we just took a chance and said okay let's let's talk to them about jesus talk to them about jesus ask him if he would like us to pray and he said okay we prayed got invited home when you know prayed again shared the gospel and told him you know this is what you need to do and and then he opens up and says my mother used to believe the way you believe and so on so it means the seed of the gospel was already there and you see the whole thing you know playing out so then i realized that hey, many things like that god has already prepared beforehand right god is prepared before and all we need to do is take that risk well we might look stupid we might look foolish uh you know if they respond negatively and well but the thing is that since it's already pre- prepared beforehand why not take the risk why not take that step of faith and move with you know christ confident and say okay uh, god you are sufficient um to do this so just want to step out and do it right and i'm sure many of you are already you know doing that as you know but just want to encourage us to continue if you're doing that and those of us who have yet to step out step out um because you'll be very you'll be amazed to see what god has planned and how god connects these things yeah the other time i remember you know um it was at the airport and uh, i was just asking the lord lord you know where should i sit okay this video thing and i just felt okay maybe i should just sit there so i sat next to this guy and then uh, um so this got talking then asked him i was carrying my guitar so um so he asked you know are you a musician are you this thing so i told him you know um just got to share with him about what what we do and then uh, about the lord and, and so on my personal this thing testimony of how i you know used to work uh, in a corporate thing now i work with church and why and all that so then got to know that his grandmother you know was a believer right so uh, so he shared you know uh, i know my grandmother and and also another uncle said so they um, they believe in jesus like you they uh, so then i just shared he, it's it's so simple you know jesus didn't come to you know start a religion or this thing he he wants a relationship with you and and this is the reason you know that we are heading towards a destiny without god but god wants to step in and and, and so um yeah so he said hey i'm glad i met you you know he, his flight was uh, earlier uh, the flight i was just sitting there and they said i'm glad we i'm glad i got to speak to you and i said hey just continue you know don't give up on jesus just continue um just get to know jesus he said yeah yeah i will right. so you see that um it it's a risk right it's a, it's a small risk you know and i also personality wise i'm not the person to take those things but i'm learning and having seen god move in these ways i know that when god says something that he's already planned it he's already there's you know maybe some network something that he's already put in place all we have to do even though i i may not be able to see it then and there but if i do it then it sings, sets things in motion right opens up and then you get to see oh wow this is why 
I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I stepped out. So, um, yeah. So I just want to encourage, you know, it is definitely risk. Yeah? Not saying that you will get it right all the time. You know, uh, you know, I made it a point that I pray for, you know, the people who are begging and you know, first I pray for them, you know, just first pray and then pay. So <laughs> I tell them I'm going to pray uh, and then I'll give you the money. Okay, so uh, just pray for whatever condition there is. And, you know, there have been really heartwarming stories. You know, there's one lady that has, uh, I said, hey, I'm going to pray and uh, I'll give you the money, but I'm praying. So I just put my hand on her and she just, you know, closed her eyes and put her hand over mine. And she was so moved. You know, she said, oh, you know, completely moved, completely touched. And uh, an old lady, you know, so um, they've been very heart moving uh, or heart, you know, really moving moments when you step out and do that as well. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So take risks. Um, the other thing is, uh, let me just. Um, where are we? Okay, um, the other thing is to practice in the sense um, uh, uh, we need to, you know, uh, when, when we learn about these gifts, you know, um, there's always a sharpening which comes through uh, walking in it. Um, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, he says, um, um, 14 and verse 31, for you can all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be encouraged. Okay, so with every time we step out and and use the gifts, um, you know, it is it is of course a practice. We are learning something. We reflect and see. Okay, I made that mistake. And now I can avoid it. I can do this. I learned something, so you know I can do it in this way. So we learn. Right, uh, there is a uh, learning that comes, and Second uh, Timothy two twenty one. If anyone cleanses himself from the latter, so, uh, yeah, that it's talking about, you know, the works of the flesh. Um, if there's a cleansing, then then he will be useful in the master's hand. So we become even more uh, useful, uh, be accurate. Uh, in, in the master's hand. So uh, it's talking about um, you know, cleansing oneself. You know, so when we learn, when we when we, dis, we discard certain things, when we take on, um, there is a cleansing, there is a you know, there's a sharpening that's happening. Okay. Um, learn from every experience. Okay. You learn from the experience, both from things that happened for the better and also things that we didn't turn out so good, didn't turn out so well. You know, we learn from those experiences and uh, well, learn not to step out in the flesh, learn not to overextend ourselves, you know, uh, several things that we learn. Okay, this is something that I can do. This is something, you know, I should not do. We learn from every experience. Okay. Um, okay. Romans 12, 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Okay, so um, so faith is involved here. You know, faith is stepping out. Faith is taking a risk. Uh, but we can increase in our faith. Right? We can grow in our faith. We build uh, ourselves up in faith. We meditate on the word of God. We listen to the word of God. We uh, we declare the word of God. Right? We pray in the we pray in tongues. We worship God. We we grow in faith, okay. And uh, Galatians three five talks about you know how are these gifts released? How are these miracles worked among you? Is it not by the hearing of faith? Right? It's not by the works of the law. It's by the hearing of faith. So faith is involved there. So it's it's good for us to grow in faith so that we can step out in proportion to our faith and minister. Uh, uh, of course, that verse is about prophecy specifically, um, so we can step out and minister and prophetic in proportion to our faith. Okay, fasting. 
again uh, helps us um, we put to death some of the things of the flesh we sharpen our hearing and uh, you know we pray and fast and uh, prepare ourselves to do this right um, receiving impartation okay and now um, god is the source god is the one who uh, who manifests himself um, in all these wonderful ways right the, so the gifts of god are, yeah, are from him it's not man made right but the thing is he uses his people his servants to activate which means to get us started and uh, and i'm so to impart more right people who are walking in it to a you know to a certain degree let's say uh, maybe certain prophets of god or pastors or God uses them to impart into our lives and add another dimension of the same thing, right? Um, in, and impartation comes in different ways, you know, maybe through laying on of hands and prayer, through um, you know, through association in the ministry by by actively you know receiving their ministry of teaching and preaching and all that and and so on. So we receive that. Uh, and Paul here says in Romans one eleven. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established. Okay. Again, in First Timothy four, four fourteen talks about the gift that was given, how by prophecy, by laying on of hands of the elders. So God, you know, uh, the, the, we, we should not mistake, we should not make a mistake and say, okay, you know, this man of God gave this gift, or this woman of God prayed and I therefore I have this gift. No, the gift belong to the Holy Spirit. He is the source. God is the source. He's the giver of gifts, right? Never, never forget that. However, God uses um, his servants, right, the ministers, in order to strengthen, in order to uh, maybe enhance certain things in us and well that's how he does it that's why we are the body of christ right so he does that which was which is again scriptural so uh, so but the focus is on god right our focus is on him and not on man because when we turn our focus on man that's when all the problem happens right when we elevate man beyond um, you know beyond the place of honor then we bring division to the body of Christ, like we see in the Corinthian church, right? Corinthian church, um, Paul had to write to the Corinthian church about these gifts um, for them to rightly use it. But what was happening was that they were elevating man. I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, whatever. And because of which they were, you know, there were strivings and, you know, different factions, the body of Christ was uh, divided there. So he had to write and give them these instructions. Hey, this is for the edification of the body, and so on. Right. So, yes, God does use man. Uh, God does use other believers to impart into our life, but our focus is on God. So let's continue to grow in our function and our anointing. Right? God has placed us in the body of Christ uh, to carry out a particular function, uh, but we need to grow in it. We need to. Um, you know, and also in the anointing, right? We 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 can expect to increase in the anointing, which means the presence and the power of the Spirit of God, um, and grow in it. And uh, as we increase in the anointing, then we can expect to increase in the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit in our in and through our lives as well. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so we have some more time. I just want to address these things. Um, foundation for the release of the gifts. Okay, proper foundation. Okay. So the gifts are from the person. The gifts are a manifestation of the person. Now, never forget that. Right? So it's not about technique. It's not about a method. Uh, it's about relationship with this person who longs to display himself okay because the lord says you know i am the vine you are the branches 
So the branch is connected. The branch has a relationship with the vine. It's a close relationship where the life of the vine flows through the branch. So we should never forget that. We should never forget that it's based on relationship. It's based on intimacy. So it's it's never on, you know, method. we will learn, you know, the Holy Spirit will teach us about, okay, you know, like we've been learning, you know, we've been looking at these gifts and we've been looking at, um, uh, you know, some of the nuts and bolts of uh, these gifts, how to operate in it, you know, how to discern or how to identify in the spirit man, or what is the prompting, you know, what is, is it something visual? No, these are the, these are the nuts and bolts of it, right? But never forget that we are looking at these nuts and bolts, but the bigger picture is that it flows from a place of relationship, from a place of intimacy. Okay, so we minister out of that relationship with the Lord. So that's of paramount importance. Um, never forget, never uh, forget that. Uh, second thing is to be strong in our identity in Christ. So you know, many times we are, what happens is people get their identity from the gift. Oh, I'm a prophet. Oh, I'm a prophet so and so. Always understand that our identity is who we are in Christ. We are children of God, sons and daughters of the Most High God. And, uh, you know, he loves us. He, uh, uh, you know, he indwells us. He empowers us. Uh, he strengthens us. He has justified us. He sanctifies us. So, you know, our identity needs to be strong and not on the gifts. Because sometimes we could go wrong, like in the, in the ministry of the gifts, right? We get it wrong and then our identity suffers. Why? Because we placed our identity in the gift. You know, you... You preached a great message and nobody came and told you that it was wonderful and your identity suffers, you know, you're rocked in your identity or, you know, maybe I should stop or, uh, you know, nobody told me that it was a great message, maybe something's wrong. No, we're strong in our identity as people of God and we are who we are because of what God has said about what God is, you know, declares about us. And it's not in the gift. It's not in the fact that we are prophesying. It's not in the fact that God uses us to heal people. It's not in the fact that God uses us to, you know, minister in different ways. No, our identity is not based on that. It's never based on that. Okay. So uh, always um, remember that. Okay. Um, okay. Quickly, a couple of other things. Demonstrate Christ-like character. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 4.15, speaking the truth in love, that you may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ. That we mature in Christ, that we, we mature in Christ's likeness. In 1 Corinthians 14 also, Paul says, pursue love. Okay, What is that love, that agape, which is Christ-like character? Right? So pursue love, grow in that love, display that love demonstrate Christ likeness okay um, so which means our motives our attitudes and everything are you know we we grow in Christ likeness we are Christ like in all that and uh, never focusing on the self or promoting ourselves or putting ourselves on a pedestal okay just because someone else does you and I don't have to do it because this is scriptural. This is what God has told us. Right? Um, okay, so we'll stop here. I think there are a couple of other things, but uh, yeah, we'll just stop here and uh, look forward to the next class where we'll, uh, you know, we'll try and um, kind of finish the rest of the portions. You know, there will always also be, you know, some tests which we'll. Uh, you know, uh, we'll put, put it up this week, maybe over the weekend. Um, yeah, so these are open book tests, um, quizzes. Okay, so you can finish those as well. Okay, okay. God bless. Have a great day and a great uh, weekend. God bless you. Bye bye.